Hey, it's Zach from HowTo.com. Today we're gonna to combine two things I love, 3D printing and the Raspberry Pi computer. Now, if you ever wanted to control your 3D printer remotely, either over your own network or over the internet, then this video is for you. We're gonna do this using an open source library called Octoprint. Octoprint allows you to control your 3D printer remotely, watch a video feed, load prints, and more. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, that's okay. You'll still learn something from this guide. If you've been thinking about getting one, be sure to check out our review guide for the Ender 3. It's our choice for the best 3D printer under $200. Now, as per the usual, I've created a full text and photo based version of this video, uh, which is linked in the video description. It has a link to everything that you'll need uh, as far as tools and materials go, and it has a little bit more information than I can fit in this video. So be sure to check that out as well. Okay, now this is everything that you should need for your OctoPrint setup. So you'll want a Raspberry Pi computer. I recommend the 3 or the the three plus. Um, you can use the smaller, cheaper Raspberry Pi Zero, but people have reported a lot of lag, which is not good for prints, um, lower print quality. So it's only like $35, so I'd grab that. Obviously you'll need an SD card. It doesn't need to be a huge one. I have a 32 gig already, so I'm just using that. You'll want the Raspberry Pi camera. It's like a little camera so that we can watch our prints. Um, you're also gonna need a longer cable for the camera because it needs to be able to reach all the way up to the top of the uh, Z-axis whenever you're printing. And then you'll need some kind of USB cable to connect the Raspberry Pi to your printer. Mine uses this um, mini USB-B port. Finally, you're gonna want to attach everything to your printer. So you can actually just put your Raspberry Pi in a normal case and plug it in and leave it next to your printer uh, if you want to, or you could print a case that'll mount to your printer now this will vary based on the printer, so I'm using a, um, an Ender 3, and so I found this on Thingiverse.com, just which, uh, you know, like a couple models to print. So this one is for the Raspberry Pi itself, and it mounts it to the aluminum channel down at the bottom. This is just a little cover for it. This is an arm that's going to attach the camera to the printer and focus it on the extruder, so you can actually watch your prints from OctoPrint. And then this is actually a housing just for the, uh, the camera itself, and this will attach to the arm. As far as powering your Raspberry Pi, there are a few ways to do that. So you can actually just use a normal AC adapter, or if you want to, you can tap into your printer's power supply, which is what I did, and I'll explain a little bit more on that later. So um, if you're gonna power it just from the wall, then you'll wanna grab an AC adapter as well. All right, now we're gonna connect all of our hardware. So the first thing we're gonna do is connect our camera. Uh, this is the camera arm, and this is the camera mount, and then obviously the camera itself. So first we're going to connect the, uh, the mount to the arm, and it just kind of slides in like this, right? And then we're going to want to use a bolt to hold it in place. So I'm using an M3 by 20 millimeter metric bolt. I'm going to use a hex key to attach it. Now again, this arm is for the Ender 3 specifically, but um, whatever printer you have, whatever you print for it, to hold your camera, we'll have like a similar mechanism of some kind. Okay, before we put it in the case, we're gonna connect our ribbon cable. Now I got a super long ribbon cable for mine. It's uh, 610 millimeters long. You don't want it too long because it'll get caught on stuff, but depending on your printer, the, the length will vary, but for the Ender 3, this one works perfectly. Now to connect your camera, you wanna pull this little tab out of the uh, Raspberry Pi camera, and then slide the cable in with the blue side facing up so the blue side facing away from the uh, lens. Slide it in and then just carefully push the connector in place and that'll lock the ribbon cable. Finally, put it into the case. And again, I just have these little pieces of foam tape in here to keep it from vibrating since I don't have any screws that small. Okay, when you're done, go ahead and attach it to the arm. And there you have it. So now your camera can be mounted to the printer. All right, now if you 3D print a case for your Raspberry Pi, there'll be different options. Um, this one amounts to the uh, aluminum rail, and if you're gonna do that, if, you're, if your uh, printer actually has uh, extruded aluminum chassis, then you can connect this right to a rail wherever you want, um, like I'm doing on the Ender 3. And you'll need these little uh, channel nuts. I'm not really actually sure what these are called, 
but the printer came with a few extra ones, and then I used some uh, metric screws from my um, my kit or bolts. Um, so this particular model actually didn't surprisingly have a space for the uh, camera cable. So if it doesn't, you're gonna wanna just cut a notch out wherever that is. And how I did that was I put the pie in place and then I just marked with a marker and then I used my snips to cut these. And of course these just broke off, but that's fine. So um, if you uh, have a small case like this, you're gonna wanna make sure that you use a very narrow heat sink. If they're too tall, then they're gonna, you know, not fit in the case or they come in contact with the case, which is really not ideal either. So go ahead and slide your Raspberry Pi into its case. Now, if yours is compact like this, it's a little bit tricky. So what I do is I take a screwdriver. The camera connector is the one uh, over here. There's an identical uh, connector for a display on the back. And if you connect it there like I did originally, then obviously you'll get no video feed and that's why. So just carefully pop this connector up. Don't pop it too hard because it'll actually come off and then you have to push it back on, it's a pain in the ass. So, all right, now I can push my camera cable in there. Now remember the blue side of the ribbon cable faces the ports. So now we're just gonna go ahead and attach the camera arm to the printer. Just kind of snaps in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and slide the Pi case into the channel on the bottom and then tighten the bolts using a hex key. And finally, connect the USB communication cable and the power cable to your Pi. Okay, now obviously you can power your Raspberry Pi by plugging an AC adapter into the wall, but I wanted to power mine from my printer, and I actually wrote a complete guide on that, which is in the video description as well, if you are interested. But basically how it works is you take a uh, step-down converter, also known as a buck converter, and then on one end, on the uh, you'll attach um, a cable that connects, taps into your printer's power supply or connects directly to its uh, power supply unit. And then on the other end, you cut a micro USB cable and uh, solder it on. And then basically you can uh, adjust this little potentiometer on here using a screwdriver and connect a multimeter to it. And then you can tune it down so that it'll take the, uh, whatever, out, um, whatever voltage the printer is outputting, which is usually like 24 volts, and it'll step it down to the five volts needed by uh, USB devices like the Pi. So, um, Again, I have a separate guide on that if you wanna check it out. I'll do a video eventually, just not yet. Again, I have a full guide here on how to that uh, will walk you through this process as well if you wanna use it for reference, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to install OctoPrint on your Raspberry Pi so you'll be good to go. All right, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is actually check and make sure that your printer is supported, and you can do that on the OctoPrint wiki. Um, chances are it is supported. I mean, there are tons of printers on here, like all the well-known ones are definitely on here. So go ahead and check that first. If you don't see your printer on here, you can usually find one that's very similar. Like a lot of printers are just knockoffs of other printer designs. So you can find the one that's closest and chances are it'll work. So this page also lists the settings that we'll use later um, to actually connect the Pi to the printer. All right, after you make sure that your printer works with uh, OctoPrint, then you're gonna wanna download the OctoPrint SD card image. So. You'll actually, I'm gonna use these terms OctoPrint and OctoPi kind of interchangeably. Basically, somebody's created a version of OctoPrint which actually runs on many different systems, specifically for the Raspberry Pi, and that image of that installation is called OctoPi. So uh, if you hear, you know, you're confused between the two, they're, they're pretty much the same thing for the purpose of this guide. So go ahead and download the OctoPrint SD card image off of the uh, OctoPrint website on the downloads page. All right, we're gonna use a program called Etcher to actually burn the SD card image to our SD card. So after you put your SD card for your Raspberry Pi into your computer, then download and install Etcher. So the OctoPi image is basically just a version of Raspbian, which is the official Raspberry Pi operating system that's been pre-configured with OctoPrint. So all you have to do is install the image onto your SD card and do like a small amount of configuration and then everything will just work. It's kind of like if you've installed RetroPie before, you just install the RetroPie disk image and it's already like set up. And you can compile it separately. Um, there are some reasons you'd, you'd want to do this. For example, um, you might want to install OctoPrint manually if you already have something else running on the SD card because this disk image will completely overwrite your existing SD card, of course. So let's say you use the same Pi for RetroPie as you're going to use for OctoPrint, which I wouldn't recommend um, for performance reasons then you could install one and then you can install this one manually. But most of the time you're gonna to wanna to have a dedicated Pi so that you don't have any kind of lag in your prints or anything like that. So you're gonna to wanna to use your own SD card. SD cards are cheap anyways. 
All right, with Etcher open, we're gonna go ahead and select the disk image we just downloaded, which is in my downloads folder here. I'm gonna click open. Then we're gonna select the drive, which it's already automatically selected. So this is the SD card that I've connected to my computer. And click continue. And then you're just gonna click flash. It might ask for your password. Okay, so it uh, looks like it's gonna take about four minutes to flash. And then at the end, it's gonna like do another pass to verify and make sure the data is correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that finish. And uh, just a quick note, Etcher is available for both uh, Mac OS and Windows. So all the steps that I'm gonna show you here are compatible with uh, either system. All right, after the SD card is done flashing, it'll automatically eject it from your computer. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and just plug your SD card back in. So like disconnect it and reconnect it from your computer really quickly. Okay, now we're gonna browse to the SD card on our computer. So obviously like in uh, Mac OS, you'll use uh, Finder to go to the, the boot drive is what it's gonna be called now. Um, and on Windows, you'll just go through like Explorer. Um, so there's a file in here called Octoprint WPA, I'm sorry, Octopi WPA Supplicant.txt. And that's where we're gonna go ahead and add our Wi Fi information. So you'll basically put in your Wi Fi, like network name and password, so that you can connect to um, Oct your Octoprint uh, Raspberry Pi remotely. And obviously, that's how you have to be able to control your computer. So, um, Open this file in any text editor. I like using Sublime Text, but you can also use something else. Just don't use anything like Word, anything that has formatting in it. You'll want to use like Notepad or something simple. If you edit this file with a rich text editor, then it'll add like formatting and things in here that'll actually screw up the file. It's no longer a plain text file when you do that. So I recommend using something like Sublime Text or uh, Notepad++ or Notepad, um, something simple. So all we're gonna do in here is uncomment the uh, lines where you put in your network SSID and PSK. And then you're gonna go ahead and edit uh, the put SSID here to be whatever your actual network name is. And then you're gonna put your password in here. I'm not gonna type that right now, obviously. And you're also gonna wanna go ahead and set your Wi-Fi country. Uh, this is important, I guess, if you use the, uh, the newest Raspberry Pi, which is the B+, 3B+. So um, I'm in the US, so I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment that line and comment out the United Kingdom one. So this is all you need to edit here, so go ahead and save the file and then close it out and safely eject your SD card. Okay, now you're gonna connect your SD card to your Raspberry Pi and connect the Raspberry Pi to your printer. Your printer will have a USB port that's meant for connecting like a, an external drive that you wanna print from. And so how Octoprint works is it creates like a connection between the Raspberry Pi and the uh, that USB port into your printer. And then it'll actually be able to communicate just like as if it we're controlling it internally, which is actually pretty cool. So for some reason, mine uses this really old uh, mini USB cable, which is the one that looks kind of like a mushroom. I don't know why so many things still use these instead of micro USB, but it seems pretty prevalent. So just go ahead and connect a cable between your Raspberry Pi and your printer using whatever type of cable the uh, printer supports. And I have a list of all the tools and materials that I used on the full guide, which is linked in the video description. If you want to check those out, it's I have some specific links to the exact cables that I use, like these short ones. Okay, after you've connected your Pi to the printer, go ahead and put your SD card in and then connect the power and then wait a few seconds for your Raspberry Pi to boot up. And then open up terminal or command prompt, depending on what you're using. All right, so now we're gonna connect to the Raspberry Pi so we can do a little more configuration. Uh, namely, we want to change the default password so it's a little more secure. So the uh, on your network, make sure you're connected to the same network as you put in that um, that text file earlier so that you're on the same network as your Pi and you're gonna to wanna to SSH into it, which is basically a secure way of uh, connecting to it. So SSH Pi at octopi.local is actually the uh, the command. So uh, the username is Pi and the host name is octopi.local. And then the default password is just the word raspberry, all lowercase. All right, so to change our default password, we're just gonna type P-A-S-S-W-D Type the current password raspberry and type our new password twice. Sorry for my obscenely loud keyboard. All right, that's really all we needed to do to connect the Pi. So um, we can actually just open our web browser now and browse to the address that our Octoprint setup is broadcasting to on our network. We'll see the setup wizard, which is actually really easy. Um, I can walk you through it quickly, but there's not a whole lot for me to cover. 
that isn't just obvious in the setup wizard. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it and I'll just make note of anything that's important. So you're gonna wanna create an account with a username and a password. And that'll allow you to control the printer remotely. All right, we're gonna enable the uh, connectivity check. We're gonna go ahead and enable plugin blacklist processing, which keeps you from being able to install uh, malicious plugins that aren't actually like authorized by Octoprint. Um, so if you wanna be able to slice files directly on Octoprint, uh, you can set this up, but it only works with older versions of Octoprint. Uh, I'm sorry, with older versions of Cura. So we're gonna go ahead and skip this for now. Okay, so now you're gonna set up your default printer. I'm using the Ender 3. And this is actually my second Octoprint setup, so I'm gonna put a two on there so I don't get confused. Um, and then the model, you can just put whatever you want. So Creality, Ender 3. You're gonna go ahead and put in your print settings. Um, if you're using the Ender 3, I actually wrote a separate guide specifically on how to configure all this for your printer, which is in the video description too. So be sure to check that out. Um, but you're gonna go ahead and put your print settings in here, whether or not you have a heated bed and um, your uh, other settings that you would normally have put in Cura. And then when we're done, just go ahead and click finish. Okay, finally, the last thing that we need to do before we can actually go ahead and, um, and start printing is to select the information for our specific printer. All right, if you go back to that list of supported printers and you find your printer in it, you'll see the instructions on which settings to use. So it says to use dev, TTY, USB zero for a serial port baud rate in auto. So when we go to our connection settings here, select your printer profile, select whichever option it says on that page, and then leave this at auto if, if that's what the setting is. Save connection settings and then auto connect on server startup and then click connect. And now your printer is gonna go ahead and connect to um, the Raspberry Pi. And now you're actually ready to print now to focus your camera, just use the little white knob that came with the camera and turn it until it looks like it's in focus in the control screen. All right, now to print a file, you're just gonna click upload and you're gonna select your G-code file, the one that you would normally generate from Cura or whatever your slicing program is, and click open. And then you can just select it in the side here and um, click the uh, load and print button. Now um, it's gonna take a minute obviously for the printer to heat up and you can actually mo monitor it here, which is kind of cool and see that the bed and the extruder are starting to um, increase in temperature. Now while your printer's heating up, you can check out some of the other cool features. Um, the G-Code viewer will show you like a layer by layer map of what your printer is gonna do, which is kind of cool. A lot of people won't have seen this before. Terminal shows the uh, serial output from the printer that's connected to your Pi. And then there's a time-lapse setting, um, which will actually allow you to record a time-lapse video of your print, which is kind of cool. So my printer's on the same network as I am, so I'm able to actually connect remotely over my network. So from my couch or my computer, um, anywhere that I'm sitting, like at my desk, I can control my printer. Now, if you wanna control your printer like from work or from down the street or at the coffee shop, um, there's actually a way to do this as well. Uh, I'm gonna cover that in a separate video, but essentially what you'll do is you'll install a plugin called Octoprint Anywhere. Now this will let you control your printer from anywhere um, without needing to open up a port to your network, which is great. So I will be doing a guide on this, but I'm not gonna cover this today because this video has gone on long enough. But uh, go ahead and install Octoprint anywhere. It's pretty straightforward if you uh, actually wanna control your printer remotely. Now, of course, you never wanna leave your printer unattended. Anything can happen and fires do happen. Um, so I would only control your printer like from work if say your spouse is at home or a roommate who can keep an eye on it for you. Um, because it's not safe to run your printer when you're not there, no matter what printer it is. Now, I hope you found this video very useful. If you did, uh, give me a comment or uh, share this video. Um, be sure to subscribe. We do cool projects all the time with 3D printing, Raspberry Pis. And as always, thank you very much for watching.